Hello, I'm Jeffrey Mishlove, and today I'd like to talk about the language of astrology. Now, I've been thinking about this recently because I realize in reflecting on the In Present series over and over and over again, I seem to be advocating that those of you who are viewing this series should let go of your cherished opinions particularly around politics, but certainly around other areas as, as well, because I keep getting feedback <laughs> from viewers who say, I know the truth. The truth is A, B, C, and D. <laughs> and I think to myself, are you so sure? How can you have confidence in that? I certainly don't. And then it dawned on me, wait a second, I have Libra rising in my astrology chart. The rising sign is, that means Libra, the sign of Libra, not the constellation, incidentally. The signs in the constellations are no longer equivalent, but the sign of Libra is at the horizon at the uh, um, at the time of my birth, which was at 1.20 a.m. For those of you who might be interested in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, on December 4th, 1946. So if, if there are astrologers out there, you're welcome to look at my chart. And let me say this, I'm talking about the language of astrology because I find that language to be a useful tool in looking at personality. It's full of complexities and subtleties, but is it very useful as a uh, predictive tool? That is, is astrology useful as a predictive tool? I've already talked about that in a previous segment on why astrology endures, and there's good research to suggest that mainstream astrological analysis, which is what I'm talking about today, is not a good predictive tool. Nevertheless, I do have Libra rising, and what does that suggest? That means my personality, my external persona, maybe the shallowest part of who I am as, as a person, likes to weigh and balance things. Libra is the sign of the scales, the scales of justice. So, typically, when I hear from viewers who tell me yeah, about uh, their strong opinions on politics or religion or some other thing, I'm weighing and balancing it naturally and against its contrary. You know, yesterday in the In Present series, I talked about everything has a contrary. So that's the, my superficial personality habit, not to adopt any one point of view, but to say it could be this, it could be that. Let's weigh and balance them. Let's see. Now, I finally realized that it's unrealistic for me to expect everybody to be a Libra rising, just like me. And let me say that I have to recognize that there are some people whose personalities will be more fixed, will be more stubborn, will like to cling to the notion of truth, more importantly. Now, my sun sign is Sagittarius, and that's a little different. The Sagittarius is a symbol of the uh, horse with the uh, human head and the body of a horse. That's the Sagittarius, and that typically represents a high-minded individual influenced by the planet Jupiter, the king of the gods, who uh, is very high-minded, who has an animal nature. Yes, but the animal nature is under the control, supposedly. Well, maybe not, because if you look at the legends of the god Jupiter or Zeus, you'll see that he does seem to allow his animal nature to have quite a lot of play. But the sign of Sagittarius is typically thought to be affiliated with high-mindedness, philosophical thinking. Now, that might represent more the core of who I am. The sun sign is deeper than the personality. The sun represents the heart, maybe the soul of an individual. However, Sagittarius is a mutable sign, so that means I'm very flexible. I'm not the kind of stubborn types. Now, an interesting thing about my astrology chart, incidentally, is that I have no 
planets in any earth signs at all. Fire, air, and water are where all of my planets are located. So naturally, when it comes to finding a mate to share my life with, I have been attracted to earthy women. <laughs> and particularly for some reason, Tauruses. My wife of 40 years is a Taurus. That's an earth sign, well grounded. So while I have my head in the clouds, I have a spouse who is always thinking of practical matters. Now, I find astrology useful in this sense in terms of my ability to characterize myself. As I say, it's a language. I don't think of it as a system of thought as much as a language to use when talking about the person, talking about the soul. And there are many other finer points related to uh, astrology. My moon, for example, is in Aries. Aries is a cardinal sign, kind of impulsive, kind of impetuous, kind of also willing to uh, take a leadership role, willing to be first. It's a, what they call a cardinal sign, which means uh, one who takes initiative. And the moon represents the emotions in astrology. So, uh, I'm giving you all this information because I realize I've been, uh, over the course of this In Presence series and the Thinking Aloud series, handing out a lot of advice. And I think you're entitled to have a sense of, you know, who is this person giving me this advice besides the actual facts of my biography? This description of myself might give you a little bit of perspective so that you can say, if, if I'm telling you to let go of your cherished ideals and you're tired of hearing me say it because you love your cherished ideals, well, then you can say to yourself, oh, it's just his Libra rising coming out. I don't have to take it so seriously. On the other hand, the fact that you are clinging to your ideals, if you do, may be uh, a very positive thing for you and it may be very inherent in the nature of your psychological makeup. And if it is, you'll probably find some astrological way of explaining it if that's of any interest to you. Now, when it comes to esoteric thought, astrology is actually pretty important. It's a very ancient esoteric system. It goes back to the ancient Babylonians and Sumerians, to the earliest people who looked up at the sky and tried to make sense of it. And as I've mentioned, my mentor, Arthur M. Young, the inventor of the Bell helicopter, was a deep student of astrology. For those of you who really want to dig into it, I would recommend his book, Nested Time. It's an autobiography that he wrote about his whole fascinating career in which he looks at his own life in terms of the language of astrology. And sometimes uh, there are very uncanny things that occur. Now, I don't think those uncanny things that do occur with regard to astrology have anything to do with astrology as a mechanistic system. It certainly is not, to my way of thinking, a very viable mechanistic system in spite of the research of Michelle Guacolin, which has never been, to my understanding, refuted and which purports to show that certain planets uh, and certain configurations, not mainstream astrology, but nevertheless not inconsistent with mainstream astrology either, just more obscure aspects of astrology really do hold up in a statistical level so that, for example, people who are born with Mars, the planet Mars on the horizon or directly overhead uh, at the time of their birth tend to uh, be uh, statistically more likely to become professional athletes than other people. Well, I think it's an interesting finding. Who knows what to make of it? <laughs> it has been replicated, I can say that. Well, 
what does this mean for you? I guess it means if you're into astrology, it gives you a little more uh, meat to chew on. If you're not into astrology, maybe it'll give you a little more appreciation for people who are. Now, l let me just share one other point with you, biorhythms. Now, uh, some of you may know about biorhythms. You can get apps for your cell phone that will calculate your biorhythm based on the date of your birth. They check 14-day rhythms, 10-day rhythms, 7-day rhythms, 21-day rhythms. And when some of these ry rhythms coincide with each other, it said you're in danger, you're vulnerable if, uh, if that happens. So, people sometimes check their biorhythms to make sure they're not about to have a bad day and make an important decision on a bad day. Now, I can tell you this, scientifically, to my knowledge, there's no basis for these biorhythms whatsoever. The idea of a 10-day or a 14-day cycle that works invariably from the day of your birth is just not supported by any empirical evidence. And yet, Biorhythms work. They have a pragmatic value. And the reason is simply, to my way of thinking, if people periodically d check and have a system that says, you know, you better be careful on this day, you better be careful on that day, that means that people are going to be more careful. And therefore, they'll be helped. It's not so different from uh, what in psychology is known as a Hawthorne effect. Uh, Hawthorne was a uh, big electrical plant back, as I recall, in the, the 1950s. And they did all sorts of psychological interventions at that plant to see if they could operate it more efficiently. It was sort of like the, the time and work studies era. And what they found is every single intervention helped, regardless of the theoretical merit of the intervention. Isn't that interesting? So, there's a pragmatic value to anything that you might want to do to help improve your life, even if that thing is misguided. Theoretically, the fact that you are taking the time and trouble to Consider what can I do to improve myself makes a real difference. So, minimally thinking, I believe the Hawthorne effect also can apply to astrology. Now, as I've said, I don't think astrology has much in the way of scientific merit, but it has some. And that's why I think it's very useful for those of you who may have strong opinions about astrology, that it's all bunk, that it's all superstition. Well, perhaps it's time for you to give those strong opinions a second review, a second analysis. Think twice. <laughs> think twice before you think once. And I will uh, leave you with that thought. Thank you for being with me.